What's even better than playing your favorite game on your phone? Playing it on a big screen TV in your living room with a couple of friends. I'm Josh Gordon, and today I'll show you how to get your existing mobile game working on Android TV. Android TV is your opportunity to develop for both the big screen and for mobile at the same time and in the same APK. That's because Android TV is just Android on a new form factor. So can you run your existing game on the TV right out of the box? Not quite, but you're nearly there. First, you'll need to make a couple of updates so it's compatible. Of course, TVs have a lot of hardware differences with mobile. For example, my TV doesn't have a touchscreen or an accelerometer. But by properly structuring your manifest and application code, you can make your game compatible with both form factors. Start by specifying the activity that's launched when the user selects your app on the TV home screen. Do so by adding the Lean Back Launcher category to an intent filter. Having this category also lets the Play Store know that your app is compatible with Android TV. Next, notice that the Android TV home screen uses a separate launcher row for games, and you'll want to make sure your game is shown here when it's installed. To do so, just add an Android is game attribute to your application element. Now Android TV uses banners instead of icons to represent your app on the home screen. If you don't have a banner, you'll need to create one. It's a fixed size drawable at 320 by 180. Your banner should always include text that identifies your game, and you should create a banner for each language you support. Now specify the banner in your manifest. Also in your manifest, you'll need to make sure you don't require any hardware features that are unavailable on the TV. For example, if your game requires a touchscreen in the manifest, your app won't be listed as compatible with TVs in the Play Store. So start by declaring that a touchscreen is not required. Next, check through your manifest for other hardware features you use on mobile, like a camera or an accelerometer. Be sure to also mark these as not required. Now keep in mind that some permissions can also imply hardware requirements. For example, using the camera permission creates an implicit dependency on camera hardware. To handle this, you'll need to explicitly mark that hardware as not required. Next, declare that your app uses the Lean Back feature, and be sure to set required to false so your game can also be installed on mobile. Now at runtime, you can check what type of device your game is running on and adapt its behavior accordingly. To do so, use the UI Mode Manager and test if the current device is a TV or mobile. Also, by using the Package Manager, you can test if specific hardware is available on the device at runtime. Now, here's a gotcha to be aware of when you're porting your game. You probably already have code that checks to see if there's an active internet connection. On mobile, commonly you just have to worry about Wi-Fi and cellular. But on Android TV, you might also have Ethernet. The best way to check for an active internet connection without having to specify the type is to use the Connectivity Manager. Now let's talk about how to control your game. Instead of a touchscreen, on the TV players control your game using a D-pad remote control or more advanced gamepad. Most TVs ship with just the remote, so if your game supports a simple input scheme, you can potentially reach every Android TV user. Always show visual controller instructions in your game for both types of controllers if you support them. Google provides generic graphics you can use for this purpose. And drawing your own is fine too. Just keep them free from branding. Now, if your game requires a gamepad, you should let players know in the Play Store. To do so, add the gamepad feature to your manifest, but be sure to always set it to required false. This is a gotcha. It must be false because gamepads are accessories and they might not be connected at the time of purchase. Instead of requiring this feature, check whether a gamepad is connected when your game starts up. And here's something else to be aware of. TV controllers periodically save energy by going into sleep mode. When this happens, they disconnect from the TV. To prevent this event from interrupting your game, you can subscribe to it by adding these lines to your manifest. Then you can handle it in your game. Check out this code sample to learn all about handling input devices and events on the TV, as well as how to handle multiple connected gamepads. 
There are also a couple of display considerations to keep in mind. First, the TV is always in landscape mode. And second, you should be aware of overscan. Overscan refers to the tendency of some TVs to clip the outside of the display. It's a historical problem that isn't specific to Android. To handle it, just avoid placing important screen elements, like a player's score, within about 5% from the edge of the display. You can find more details about Overscan at this link. Now, one of the most powerful parts of Android TVs is that they open up new opportunities for local multiplayer gaming. For example, you can use your Android phone as a second screen and as a game controller for your TV game. You can enable this technology using an API called Nearby Connections, and you can see it in action by watching this video. We have tons of great resources to help you learn more, which can be found at these links. Thanks very much for watching, and happy gaming.